Zie je opnieuw zoeken? Hallo ja. everybody. Kun je even in de hal gaan ja. staan en kijken hoe de, de geluid ja, is? Ik hoor hem. Ik hoor hem. Hey. Oké, okay, goed. Excellent. Hey. hey Pieter, hoe gaat ie? Ja, goed. Goed? Ja, Mooi zo. Oh, gaat allemaal goed? Ja. Ja, ja, ja. ja. Ik ook, ik ben ook heel benieuwd. Het, weer, het is een beetje droog nu weer. Dus, uh... Een beetje droog, ja. Ja, 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 ja. ja het komt allemaal goed. Hier is de presentatie. Ja. We hebben vanmorgen nog een test. Um... Uh, niet te nat in het land. Het is redelijk nat, ja. maar weet je wat dat heeft ook zijn voordelen? Dan gaan we ze drie laten zien onder nat omstandigheden. Ja, precies. En uh, we hebben verschillende parcelen, grasland en andere dingen. En uh, dat is gewoon, uh, gewoon zo goed om te doen. Ja, ja, ja. ja, 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 ja. ja, ja, ja. ja. Ik ben heel benieuwd. Ja, ja, ja. ja, ja. We hebben hier uh, zo koffie en thee, dus ja. je kunt uh, lekker jezelf uh, iets inschenken. Ja, ik, kan... ik denk dat 58 meldingen. Dus uh, we zien het wel. Hey, Thierry Sakant. Aangenaam. Hoi. Hoi, Ilfried. Hallo. Hallo. Leuk dat je hier komt. Belangrijke dag. Ja, heel belangrijke dag. Hoi. Hoi, Thierry Stakkermans. Ik heb je e-mail goed gehad. I had your e-mail this morning. Ja, ja, ja. Goed, goed. Hey. Hoi. Welkom. Welkom, Frank. Hallo. Is Martin wel of niet? Ik heb Martin zelf nog niet gezien. Ja. Hij zal wel een keer aankomen. Hij succes. Ja, bedankt. Doe maar lekker aanschuiven. Ja. Er is 58 meldingen, dus uh, alle stoelen worden bezet. Dus zelf als je aan het woord zit, komt het goed. Ja, oké. Okay. Ja, ja, ja. Hé hey, Jelle, gelukkig nu ja. Ik heb je nog niet gezien van het jaar. Ja. Had je goed? Beste mensen. Ja. ja. Mooi zo. Ja. ja. Nog iets gehoord uh, van de provincie? Of, uh, N- niks, nog niks. Oh, ja. Ja. Maar ik hou je wel op de hoogte ja. over. Top. Hé hey, Bernard. Echt? Hoe gaat ie? Goed. Ja. Mooi zo. Wow, ook heel goed. Wat een gefeliciteerd. Bedankt. Ja, ja, bedankt. Ja, heel leuk. Het komt allemaal samen nu. Ja, het komt allemaal dezelfde week. Ja. Ja. Druk zat. Ja, ja, de nachten zijn kort. Ja, dan maar het komt allemaal goed. Ja, ja. Mooi. Er is koffie en thee. Ga maar lekker uh, iets nemen. En, uh, en neem maar een plaats gewoon lekker. Ja. 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 Je hebt contact gehad met Sandra Bennaars. Ja, ja, dat klopt. Over dat uh, nieuwe ja? magazine, die ik daar gezien heb gaan beginnen. Ja. En um, jij leest TCF? Ja. Zou jij alvast een paar uh, bladen door willen kijken en zien welke verhalen jij denkt dat interessant zouden kunnen zijn voor ons? Want wij kunnen samenwerken met TCF, dat we het gezien. Oké. Okay. En uh, dan kunnen we een paar artikelen ook vertalen, later vertalen. Ja, oké. Okay. Uh, heb jij een idee om dat even te doen? Om te kijken om welke verhalen interessant zouden kunnen zijn voor, voor Nederlandse omstandigheden? Ik zal, uh, ik, ik had ook een e-mail met Sander. We hebben afgesproken om een keer uh, ontmoeten en ja, kijken precies. wat we kunnen voor elkaar betekenen. Ja, exact. Ja, 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 ja. En dan zou je ook even moeten kijken wat je daarvoor zou willen hebben en ja. wat er ja. 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 goed zou moeten zijn. En dat soort ja, dingen. zeker. Ja, ja, ja. Ja, er is zeker goede materiaal in TSF voor ja. die, uh, de, de tijdschrift, de elektronische tijdschrift, dat ja. jullie beginnen. Ja. Maar um, ik, um, we, we doen er zeker over praten. Misschien dadelijk bij de receptie, dan hebben we misschien meer tijd als je wil even zelf sparen of zoiets. Ja, maar daar, daar komen we maar goed. Ja, doen we dat. Hey. Goedemiddag. Goedemiddag. Gaat ie? Ja. Goed. De beste wensen nog. Bedankt, bedankt. Ja. ja. Ik wil maar ook even wat zullen van huis mijn collega Gietje Raaphorst van ja. Nordic Mees. Ah, oké. Okay, ja, ze ja, ja. ook uh, meekomen, want we zijn er erg geïnteresseerd in de ja. werkzaamheden, maar uh, ze is helaas veel net. Dus, dus, ah, oké. Okay. Ze uh, kan niet komen. Oké. Okay. Nee, dan contact met jou. Oké, okay, goed, prima. Oké. Okay. Nou, leuk dat jij bent er. Uh, ja. Ja, ja. We hebben koffie. Ja, het komt allemaal goed. Uh, we doen onze presentatie in de zaal en aan de hand gaan we de veld in. Het is lekker dat jij ook de goede schoenen aan om in de veld te gaan kijken. En, uh, en doe maar lekker een kopje thee nemen of een kopje koffie, wat je heeft graag. En over een paar minuten zullen we, zullen we beginnen. Oké, okay, ja. Ja, ja.
En dat werkt ook? Werkt ook. Ja. Dat is twee minuten. Oké. Okay. Ja. Ja. Nee, niet per se. De meeste mensen wel, maar niet per se iedereen. Ja. Ik zal gewoon mensen aan begroeten een beetje en een beetje... Hey Jaap, leuk dat je bent. Ja. ja. Leuk om je te zien. We krijgen het echte werk te zien, hè? Straks. Ja, 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 ja. We gaan er wel in. Leuk. Ja, het is een beetje nat, maar uh, dat maakt niet uit. Dan kunnen we ook zien. Kan jullie ook zien hoe het werkt als ja. het nat is? Ja, 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 ja. Ja, dat heb je soms, hè? Dat heb je ja. Zonlandbouw. En het is nu droog buiten. Dat scheelt weer. De grond is nat, dat regent niet. Dus dat is voor dat, het publiek, hè? Die, dat is fijn voor de mensen, ja. Die zijn wat ontvankelijker dan. Ja, ja, zeker. Ja, ja, ja. Oké. Okay. En uh, ja, heb je een idee van het publiek wat hier zit? Uh, we hebben mensen uit Engeland, we hebben mensen uit Engeland, we hebben mensen uit Frankrijk, uit België, uit Nederland, oh, mensen, mensen van de universiteit, studenten. Dat is echt een gericht publiek, als je zo'n breed publiek hebt. Ja, ja, ja. ja. Hey, hallo. Gefeliciteerd. Bedankt. Bedankt. Hey Fred, bedankt. bedankt. Kom maar lekker binnen. Hey Tessa. Van harte gefeliciteerd. Bedankt. Ja. Ja. Hey Felix, hoe gaat ie? Ja, goed met jou ook. Ook goed, ja. Heel goed, ja. Een beetje kort. Ja, een beetje kort. Ja, een beetje kort. Ja, een beetje kort. Gefeliciteerd. Bedankt. Oké, okay, goed. Hey Johan, leuk dat je kon komen. Ja, leuk. Goed. Met deze dag. Bedankt, ja. bedankt. Ja. Kom maar goed. Ja. 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 Doe maar, doe maar, doe maar. Ja. Ik wacht nog even een minuut, want Bastian zal nog even naar binnen lopen of zoiets. Misschien een minuutje extra. Om, iedereen is lang niet hier, dus uh, het, is, uh, het is gewoon. Ja. Oké. Okay. Net als de vrienden die, die komen van weg af, die komen pas nu aan, dus uh, ja, even, uh, even tijd geven. Ja. Vas-y, vas-y. Als je kijkt door de raam zijn er nog wel wat mensen die lopen naar binnen. Ja, ja, ja. 
Dat is goed, dat is heel goed. Ik een beetje gelijk met water over, zei hij, maar voor de rest uh, ja. geen probleem. Een beter een boot te leven. Ja. Oké. Okay. Yes? Ja. Als je wil, is het toch koffie en thee? Ik weet niet of je. Ja, nee. Oké, okay, goed. Ja. Ja. Hey, ik denk we moeten beginnen om anders te beginnen om een beetje lang te zijn. Hè? Ja. Huh? Ja. Ja. Hey Martin, leuk dat je komt komen. Ik heb de laatste aangetrokken. Dan heb je goed gedaan, uh... het is nat buiten. Ja. Schuin er aan? Sorry? Schuin er aan? Ja, ja, Frank. Ja, ja, ja. Het is vijf over drie, ik denk dat we beginnen. En, uh, ja. Die komt nog wel aan, komt nog wel aan. Ja. Ja. Ik doe misschien die voorleg dan uit om een beetje als ik bent te gaan. Ja. Ja. Oké. Okay. Ja. Als je wil, ja. ja. Hello everybody. Welcome to the official presentation of the dream. I would like to welcome everybody here in this room. Uh, we have people from the Netherlands, of course, but also from Belgium, from France, and from the UK. Also, we have a live stream going on at the moment. And uh, watching the live stream, we have people from Belgium, from France, from Spain, from Hungary, uh, from Norway, and from the USA. So, uh, networks help. And, um, also, you might notice that I'm a bit tired. Um, it's partly due to the presentation, but partly due, due also to the fact that this weekend I became a father with my partner, Riha Shan. It was a bit early. It was three weeks early, earlier than planned. Uh, but the baby is healthy, the mother is healthy, and uh, everything is going well. But, uh, let's start this event. Uh, a little reminder of the program. So now we have a presentation of about half an hour. And after that, we will go into the field doing uh, some demonstrations. And later on, we have some drinks uh, which, which we'll have in the, in the shed outside. Not outside, but in the shed, which is this way. Yeah. Um, so first, the presentation. Uh, I would like today to, to present you the vision of Zebril, the technology we have, and our product. But first of all, a bit of the story of Zebril. So, uh, my name is Terry Stockermans. I am the founder and CEO of uh, Zebril. I am a farmer, I'm also an engineer, and I traveled a lot. And, and I'm also a true believer in that the fact is that sustainable farming is conservation agriculture. 
you may not all be, um, you may not all know conservation agriculture, but I will introduce it so everybody has some good, uh, good base on this. And what I found out is that conservation agriculture deserves better seeding technology. Everywhere I went, Australia, France, Spain, I could see that we could improve seeding technology. And this is what there was needs and rooms for improvement. So uh, the project started in June 2015, so about two and a half years ago. Through this per period of time, I read thousands of pages of literature and I did quite some benchmarking as well. I did five prototypes, from which there was many variations of every prototype. So was, there was quite some engineering trials and error going on. But today I've got a registered brand, Zebril, and I've got a patent pending. A patent pending. Uh, so for the story, the first prototype I made, I made it out of a plow. I needed something strong, but really reasonably cheap to start with and to make a, 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 to try the principle out. So I bought a second hand plow, I did some modification on it, and uh, I use it as a start to know and learn about it and observe all what I wanted to improve and how to do it. Uh, after this one, there were four more of the prototype. Not everything always went to plan. For example, this, this was prototype two, which I had a variation on the time. And instead of uh, seeding, I was digging the soil. So yeah, those type of things happened. Uh, and also, when you develop, when you develop zero tillage seeding, you also spend a lot of time observing seedlings, seeds, and also counting them, making sure you have all your plants uh, we, are, we are popping out of the soil. So our vision, what we plan to achieve. So Zibril, this is uh, what you will see on our business card. We are a company specialized in knowledge and equipment for conservation agriculture. But what is conservation agriculture? It has its origin uh, in the fact that farmers along the year have seen that the way we manage soil conventionally has issues with the soil. We have issues and we are degrading, degrading our soil slowly. Uh, for example, in the 1930s, due to intensive tillage, we had the Dust Bowl in, uh, in North America. We have, we have also some erosion uh, issues in South America, but also here in the south of the Netherlands. When there's a big <coughs> rain and that the soil is intens intensively tilled, just go dr drain and goes into the river. We have some desert desertification issue around the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. And all those countries are very busy with how to preserve the soil and keep it alive. And also, more globally, we can observe that soil is degrading rapidly. And I will uh, use the example of the flavor polder. Flavor polder is a polder in the Netherlands which is 50 years old. It is a very young polder, and it's a very young soil. 50 years for soil is very young. But we are already seeing degradation problem in the soil. We are losing fertility. So, and farmers seeing this, and agronomists seeing this, they are starting to ask, ask themselves question, and they observe that in nature, we do not have those problems, but when we do conventional farming, we do have those problems. So they think, can we do something like mimicking nature? Can we mimic nature? And uh, yes, we can. And this is what conservation agriculture does. I will, if you look at those, those two pictures, we, are, we have here a piece of land which, which is quite natural. And here we have a piece of land which has been plowed. And when we look at those two uh, pictures, we can see very quickly three differences between the nature and the conventional farming. 
The first one, nature always cover the soil. It covers it with living plants or with uh, dead plants, but it's never bare, it's never naked. The second difference is that nature doesn't do tillage, it doesn't do plowing, it does none of those things. So there might be sometimes a wild pig, but it, this is all what happened to the soil. And the third, third thing is, is the biodiversity. If you look here into this picture, you see quickly a dozen of plants living on this land. But more than this, in the soil, if you will dig in the soil, you will find thousands of, maybe millions of living uh, beings, like uh, bacteria, fungus, protozoa, earthworms, and so on and so on. So farmers have decided, a number of farmers have decided, I want to do this on my farm. So, to do this, they apply those three principles, which are to cover the soil at all time, to avoid soil disturbance, and to increase biodiversity. When you do this, and you are going to plant a new crop, your field will look like this. Quite some uh, residues on the soil, you don't see any bare ground, and your plants, this is a corn plant, your plants are popping out of the soil. Um, and also the free principle you apply in conservation agriculture. As the grill, we focus, we help the farmer on one of those free principles, which is avoiding soil disturbance. And we also often call it zero tillage. It's, uh, I will say it quite often during the presentation, zero tillage. When I say zero tillage, I refer to the fact that we do not want to disturb the soil. Uh, also, a little piece of information. Conservation agriculture does zero tillage, but not all zero tillage is conservation agriculture. It's important to know the difference. Um, so which crop do we do, we do in uh, conservation agriculture? So since many years, since this, at the start we were really good with winter crops. Started quite well with winter crops like winter wheat, winter barley, cover crops are quite uh, something we know since many years how to do, and grassland also. In the latest year, with the knowledge building up, we are stepping more and more into summer crops, such as corn, sorghum, sunflowers. And in the close future, what I see happen in the close future is that we'll st uh, start to do root crops on large scale. In Switzerland, they have been busy with doing uh, sugar beet in conservation, ag conservation agriculture since more than 15 years. And in Argentina, they have been busy with onions. And this is a fact I, I like to highlight here in the Netherlands. Maybe something we should start to think about it. Can we maybe apply those principles for our sugar beet crop and our onion crops? So, why at Zebril we are so focused on conservation agriculture? So we know it's good for the environment. There is a, a very long list of good reasons good, um, good reason that conservation agriculture is good for the environment. I will not uh, list them all, but you have understood it helps to stop soil losses like soil degradation or soil erosion, and there is a long list. Um, it's also good for climate change adapt adaptation. Again, there is a long list of posit positive effects of conservation agriculture on this. It helps to catch more rainwater. The layer of residue on the top helps to isolate the soil from extreme weather events, and so on and so on. But you have also to be aware that conservation agriculture is highly productive. Um, in, 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 on the global scale, if you look glo globally, you will find that uh, the yield difference between conventional agriculture and conservation agriculture is only 2.5%. Uh, conservation agriculture yields today 2.5% less than uh, plowing or intensive tillage. Uh, in my eyes, that's it's not much. With knowledge and technology, we will bridge this gap 
quite quickly. And I believe we will get higher, at some stage, we'll get higher yields in conservation agriculture than in intensive tillage. And it's also maybe good to, to be aware that today, conservation agriculture is the first alternative to intensive tillage, to conventional farming. It covers today 125 million hectares. Is it a lot? Is it, uh, or is it little? Just to uh, an element of comparison, organic farming covers 43 million hectares. So you can see that conservation agriculture is, covers a bigger acreage than, um, than organic farming. So now you could ask you the question, why is it real better? Indeed, 125 million hectares already. It means there is zero tillage cedar already exists. So what are we doing better? What are we doing differently? In fact, um, zero tillage cedar are already quite developed, I have to say. But what we did at Zibril is we tried to bring together uh, very important key functions that, you, that most cedar do not have. They have some key functions, but not all of them. So we decided we have to, to do this to bring all those key functions together. And therefore, Zibril is different because it does a combination of things. It makes sure you have a clear seam to soil contact. It makes sure that your seed have a better hydration and a better respiration. A seed is a living organism. It needs to hydrate itself, getting moisture, and it needs to breathe. And same thing with the seedling. It does this as well. Um, we maintain or improve the soil structure while seeding. And we use efficiently and safely fertilizer. And also, we make sure it is cheap and affordable for the farmers. So the bread is a combination of this. Uh, now it's time to, uh, to talk a bit more about the, the technology. Um, as, as, when you look at zero tillage cedar, you start with a, uh, a ground which is untouched. And when you start to look at what the cedar needs to do, you find out a cedar, a zero tillage cedar, has many things to do. It's, it does up to 32 functions simul sim simultaneously. Uh, I will not explain them all, but, uh, but I will just put the list over there, and later you, you may check it by yourself. Um, and it does what happens as well. If you look a zero at a cedar in the field, you can see from a far distance that the tractor is only traveling at 5 or 10 or 15 kilometers an hour, which you can think is slow. But between the opening of the seed slot and the closing of it, there's only a fraction of a second. It goes, respect to the soil, it goes very quickly. And sometimes it means that in some situation, you need to be able to do all those 32 functions in a fraction of a second. It goes very fast. Um, yeah, also for those, this list um, of functions, I did also put it on my blog and write an, uh, an article about it. So if you are interested, you can go to my blog and check it out. Uh, but we are, today we are not talking about those 32 functions. We'll just focus on a few, which are the clean seed to soil contact, the, uh, the seed hydration and respiration, which both of them are very important for the uh, seed germination rate. So when you plant a new crop, what you target for is that 90% or 95% or more than this, more than 90% of your seed or more are giving you a seedling and a plant to harvest at the end. And those two elements are very important for the seed germination rate. Uh, we are looking also at maintaining or improving the soil structure, and we are looking at the fertilizer. And uh, those two functions are very important for the number of seedlings will fi finally will pop out of the soil, and how strong and healthy they are. Because you, you want all your field to be homogeneous, 
with strong and healthy seedlings. And this is what it looks like uh, on the close-up view. Uh, so I'll talk about those four functions. You can see them here in this picture. You have here um, a soil in conservation agriculture. You have here your soil. On the top, you have your plants residue. You have the seed in the middle here with a good structure around it and is able to uh, breathe and hydrate himself. And you have here, located at a safe distance, uh, the fertilizer. It's close enough, but not too close. And this is what we need. I will put now this image in the far right corners. And we are, I'm going to show you how you can achieve those functions. How does the build achieve those functions? So you start with an undisturbed soil. First, you make a narrow vertical cut. It's about four millimeters wide. Then, in the bottom, you come and you make some horizontal cuts. Once you have done this, you have two soil flaps, which, if you are clever with your design, you can lift, lift slowly and smoothly. This gives you some space, a channel in the middle, and some space in the soil to locate products and to introduce products. You will um, inject some fertilizer, some liquid fertilizer with, a, um, with tubes in a pipe, pipe system. Then you have the place to locate your seed. <coughs> Once uh, the seed are keep traveling, you will ask some help from gravity. It's very cheap, so every time you can use gravity, just use gravity. The soil flaps at some stage will start to fall down by themselves. And finally, you will press on, on the soil flaps to finish the closing and to have it neat and tidy. And from here, you can see you have achieved what you were targeting for. Uh, so now, let's introduce all those functions in a design. Uh, here is a, a computer image of a uh, Zbill opener. Uh, there's many features on it, but to simplify it, uh, we're going to take off the frame. Frames are boring, we don't need to focus on it. And we're going to take off the gauge wheels as well. That's, non that's well known science, so that's nothing to really talk about. You are left with those three elements. I'll rotate a bit the picture. You have here always a sole. You have here a front disc a sitting boot, and a press wheels, some press wheels. So, as explained, you start with an undisturbed soil. Then the disc come into action and will make this narrow vertical cut. So uh, the cedar travel a bit more along, and the sitting boot come into action. The first function that does the sitting boot is making some horizontal cuts. Then it will lift the soil flaps. Then it will inject the fertilizer, place the seed. <coughs> behind the ceiling, behind the ceiling boots, you have some space, and the soil flaps will start to close themselves with gravity. And then, with the press wheels, you will finish finish the closing. I now rotate the view. Again, here, the uh, the pressing effect of the press wheels. And if you look behind this soil block, you will see, see here at the back what you want to achieve. You see it, your fertilizer, and it's a good, good element of uh, conservation agriculture soil. Uh, this is what it, lo it looks like uh, in the film. So here you have um, a photo which shows you just behind the press wheels. This is what you have just behind the press wheels. So there is corn seed here under the ground with fertilizer. Uh, this is a, uh, from the tractor cab. Uh, here you have a, uh, a two-row planter, uh, which is my prototype number five, by the way. But anyway, uh, here you have the planter. Behind the planter, it just happened to be planted. On this side of the picture, it has been plant planted as well with corn seeds, but here, it's, it's still too, too left to plant. 
So from the tractor cab, you, uh, you, uh, you can barely see the, the operation. That's why also uh, I give the name of zip drill, because it's like a zipper. Uh, you open the sole and you close it back and you barely see it. And this is a picture three weeks later. Uh, Corns, seedlings have germinated, emerged from the soil. Uh, the grassland, which is here, have been spread off. Um, and the corns will grow and uh, become strong. And, and uh, this is in France. And since we planted this field, it has been harvested. So, uh, yeah. So let's come back to those uh, elements of the design. Uh, we'll take away the block of soil. And as I said, the, the seeding boot does four different functions, which are the horizontal cut with some wings features at the front. Then in this area, you, uh, the seeding boot will uh, lift the soil with the soil wedge principle. And at the back, you have a pr uh, product channel where you can inject your fertilizer where you can introduce your seed. You can also add some other product if you need, uh, like, like slug bite, for example. Uh, so this is how um, Zibril does those uh, key functions. So we have here our clean seed to soil contact, the good hydration of, in respiration of the seed, the good soil structure, and the efficient and safe fertilizer placement. And this is three weeks after planting, your corn is off, or whatever crop you have, it, is, it has to take off, and then it will grow. It does grow, it, not it will, but it does grow, it grows very well, and uh, you will just manage your crop like you used to. Um, so at, uh, at Zebril, our first product, as a, uh, is a retrofit kit for planters. It is simple, it is affordable, and it is efficient. Uh, just some vocabulary. Uh, in some countries, a, pr a planter is also called a precision seeder. So those two words mean the same thing. Uh, our first product fits uh, the John Deere Maximerge row unit. And it fits the monosem NG3, <coughs> NG plus 3, NG plus 4, and NX. For other modern brands, uh, just call us, we develop on a request. Yeah. So um, now I will show you how, uh, how you mount a retrofit kit on a John Deere Max Emerge. Uh, so you have four elements to be mounted to, to your planter. You have at the front the flat and sharp disc, which, which you show, saw, be, saw before in the pictures, which is uh, this one like this. You have a seating boot, a zip drill seating boot, just like this one. And you have two gauge drills, just uh, like this one. And mounting zip drill on a John Deere Max Emerge happens in five steps. First step, you dismount. You dismount this uh, double disc and you dismount the gauge wheels as well. And most of you will have a uh, front, uh, front disc at the front, which often is a wavy disc. You dismount this one as well. Dismount this one as well. Uh, step two, you will start to mount the uh, seating boot. Uh, you mount it with four nuts, two bolts and four nuts, so it's very easy. Uh, then you mount the gauge wheels. Those are two bolts as well, very simple. Then you mount the front disc. Um, there are five bolts on the hub, so that's very easy to do. And finally, you, you connect your liquid fertilizer system to the seeding boot, and, uh, and you're ready to go. That's easy. Um, where to get your uh, Zebra Retrofit Kit? Um, the good thing with the Zebra Retrofit Kit, it fits in a box, and this box fits on a pallet, so anywhere you are, we can deliver. We just put this box on a truck in a container, and we send it to you. 
so this is uh, we come to the end of this uh, this presentation. So at Zip Drill we stand for soul health. We we believe it's important. Soul is a non-renewable -renew resource. We have to take care of it. We will have soon 9 billion people to feed. We need to have soul and good health. Uh, what we do at Zip Drill? Oh, uh, what we do at Zip Drill? We do zero tillage technology for conservation agriculture because we think conservation agriculture is the best way to take care of our souls and feed everybody. And our focus today, we have developed a retrofit kit for a, um, for a planter and we would like to send it, uh, send it out to the farmers. How does uh, the retrofit kits help the farmers? It helps them to get an efficient and safe crop establishment. Uh, with mainly the four function we really focused on, the combination of clean seed to soil, clean seed to soil contact, uh, seed hydration and respiration, which are, as we said, important for seed germination rate, the soil structure, keep it right, make it good, and then the fertilizer, put it there, the right place, the right quantity, in a safe manner, it does not burn the seed. And those two last functions are very important for the seedlings and uh, for, the, for the numbers of seedlings and their health. Uh, in a few minutes, we will go, uh, go to the demonstration. Um, and first of all, I give you some background information. Uh, first of all, for the people watching the live stream, uh, the camera is coming with us to the demonstration. So uh, stay online and uh, you will be able to follow the demonstration. At the demonstration, uh, we have two planters. First, we have this one which is a complete machine equipped with liquid fertilizer, slug bite, everything. Uh, it's very efficient, works very well, but it's very compacted and you do not see, you don't have a proper view on it. At the same, and I have also, we have also uh, this John Deere row unit. It is smaller, it does not have liquid fertilizer, but the really good thing about it you can see very well what the machine is doing. So today in the field, we will go with this, uh, this machine. So from every angle, you will be able to watch properly what is happening, how we cut the soil, how we open it, how we introduce product, and, uh, and see the results. Uh, we have three fields for the demonstration. We have a, a green cover, which is uh, English ryegrass. And we have two decaying covers, uh, one is a sprayed meadow, and the second is a frosted and rolled, rolled sun, shoo, sudden grass. Sorry. Um, so you know, uh, the field conditions are wet. Uh, <coughs> since the beginning of the year until yesterday, we had 40, 30, 41 millimeters of rain. So in nine, day, nine days, we had 41 millimeters of rain. And again, today, this morning, it rained. So uh, I think uh, that's very interesting because this gives you the opportunity to see the drill in wet conditions. And uh, so how to get to the field? Um, it's very uh, close to here. It's a two minute walk. I will say just uh, walk together, follow the group and we get there. Uh, before we go there, I, we have time for two quick short questions. Does, uh, does anybody have a question? Okay, Berend, what is your question? Yeah, thank you for a very nice presentation. I got two short questions then. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, first one is, you don't need to remove the weeds because the weeds is already there, isn't it? Sorry, is it? The, the function of the grass or the other soil yeah. is you don't need to remove the weeds. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So the question of uh, of Berend, I, I repeat the question for the live stream because I, I, I couldn't hear you. The question of Berend is that uh, does the soil cover help you to for the weed management? Indeed, 
the soil cover can be a great tool to manage uh, manage weeds for the weed management. Uh, first of all, because you do zero tillage, you do not put back seed weeds in the seeding bed. You don't create a seeding bed for seed weeds. So first thing, you, don't, you have less seeds which will germinate. Um, and also, in, uh, if you grow very thick cover and you roll them the proper way and so on and so on, you can uh, really reduce the amount of uh, herbicide you need and you can get a very good uh, weed control. Yeah. Yeah. So, thanks for the question. Yeah. Okay. Second small question. Okay. <laughs> it was about the, the herbicides. Yeah. Um, most farmers today who, who are uh, doing conservation, I, oh, I'll repeat for the question. The question, the second question of Berend is, uh, what about the herbicide use? Uh, do you still need to use herbicide or uh, can you stop all herbicide use? Uh, in conservation agriculture, uh, most farmers use herbicide to control uh, their uh, weed and control also the cover crops because Herbicide can also be a way to manage your cover crops. Uh, can be very handy. Uh, there are some uh, alternatives to, uh, to manage your weeds in different ways than herbicide, or, or do it all with, without herbicide. But most farmers use herbicide. It is safe, it is efficient. And uh, if you apply herbicide at the right amount, right time, you're doing a good job for your farm and there's no significant impact on the environment. So that, that's okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got uh, a, f a question coming from Victor. Okay. Yeah. Is it, I hope it's a quick question. Yes. Yeah? Do, do you have, uh, is it possible to have a tungsten carbide on the seed boot? And is it possible to reuse the same coat with Okay. Okay. So, so uh, Victor has two questions. Yeah. First one, can, can, you, can you equip uh, the seeding boot with uh, carbi uh, carbide tungsten? Yeah. The, uh, yes, we can equip the, carbide, the seeding boot with carbide tungsten. That is uh, something you can do, definitely. Second question is, uh, can I reuse the wheels of the John Deere Maximerge row unit. Uh, not with the drill. You need to change uh, the wheels. The reason is uh, because we, on the John Deere Maximerge, uh, maybe I can draw on this board quickly. On the John Deere Maximerge, you make the seat slot here and you have your wheels touching the, the disc. But here we are lifting the soil on both sides, and you cannot have your wheels that close, so you need to have a set of wheels which is at some distance of the sitting boot. That's why you need uh, another pair of wheels. Yeah. So, thanks for the questions. Uh, I would like now to invite all of you to, uh, to put on your jackets because it's cold outside. And, uh, and to follow us to, uh, to the field for the demonstrations. <laughs> Hey. Hey, Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Maar ik ben, ik ben alleen mijn schoenen vergeten. Oké. Okay. Dat is niet handig, hè? Er is een betonnen pad. Je kunt uh, op de betonnen pad lopen zonder je eigen, uh, zonder de schoenen vies te maken, zeg maar. Je kunt van de betonnen pad ook nog wel wat zien. Ja. ja. En ik zou het even zwemmen. Ik zie het filmen. En je hebt het ook nog Graag je. Waar kun je het gedaan eigenlijk? Ik ben Fransman. Fransman. Ja. Dus, uh, daar heb je dan een boerderij. Heb je dit, uh, uh, ik, ik heb, uh, mijn, mijn vader en moeder hebben een boerderij in Frankrijk, yeah. Akkerbouw. En ik heb uh, de Franse hoge landbouwschool gedaan. Yeah. En ik heb uh, meerdere jaren op boerderijen gewerkt. 
Ik heb op boerderijen gewerkt in Australië en in Frankrijk. Oké. Okay. Deze moet een beetje buiten blijven. Dit, dit heb je zeg maar, zelf ontwikkeld of heb je dit in het kader van een, van een project met Wageningen gedaan? Nee, dat is zelf ontwikkeling. Ja, mijn eigen ontwikkeling. Ja. Wat is je verdienmodel eigenlijk dan? Verdienmodel? <laughs> Ik moet nou die, uh, die uh, dingen verkopen, maar ik zal het bij later uh, beter uh, vertellen. Ik verhaal nu lekker naar buiten. En uh, zo voor de demonstratie. Maar la later kunnen we erover praten als je wil. Ik moet even. Uh... Ja. Oh. oh, ja, oké. Okay. Ik, uh, ik, 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 zal, ja, ik zal maar even. Sorry. Sorry, excuse me. Sorry. Sorry, excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. Ik ben hier. Ja. Ja. Please uh, follow me. We are going downstairs first. Hey Roel, Roel, we gaan nu demonstratie doen. Kom je ook mee? Oké, okay, leuk. Zo om de gebouw. Ze waren in de zaal, maar misschien dat ze al uh, wachten. Ja. Ja. Ja, we proeven ons af. Is het nu uh, is het vooral dat je ook uh, dat het uiteindelijk minder kost hebt of dat je opbrengt in de toekomst ook omhoog? Uh, <laughs> op, uh, beide. Het, beide. Uh, het, het is beide eigenlijk. Je hebt uh, profijt van beide. Okay, ja. Ja, 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 ja. Doe je kosten verlagen, want uh, je, je heeft minder machines nodig. Je bent minder uur op het land. Uh, eigenlijk is het zo dat in de plaats van, uh, in de plaats van uh, gasolie te gebruiken, had je meer zonnelicht gebruiken. Je had uh, roenbemester langer kweken, meer kweken roenbemester. Je had steeds meer zonne-energie gebruiken. Dus je doet eigenlijk uh, olie vervangen met, uh, met zonne-energie. Dat is een andere manier om zon te gebruiken. En, uh, ja. En eh uh...
Ja, precies. En ook de dynamica van je bodem is beter, dus uh, je hoeft minder bemesting te gebruiken. Ja. Ja. Moet je nog ja. Ja, ja, maar mensen komen nog eraan, dus het komt goed. Ja. Ja. ja, dat klopt. Vandaag of? Uh, nee, dat was uh, zondag om 1 om uur s'nachts. Vannacht? Nee, zondag. Was zondag? Okay. Ja, dus hij is nu drie, vier dagen. Dus ja, 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 ja. Een dochter, ja. Een jongetje. Een jochie, okay. Die heet Abel. Ja, ja, ja. ja, ja. Abel? Abel, oké. Ja, ja. Leuk. Ja, makkelijk te zeggen in het Frans en Nederlands. Ja. En ook Elian en ik hebben, hebben elkaar leren kennen in Nieuw-Zeeland. En uh, in Abel uh, Tasman oh, ja, is de, ja. heeft het ontdekt. Oh, ja, 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 ja. Dat ja. is goed, hè? Doet ik, ja. Wat kost het? Ik zou het dadelijk vertellen. Ja. ja. Oké. Okay. So, uh, well, hi everybody, thanks for, uh, for joining the demonstration. Uh, first of all, we will uh, operate the machine without seeding, just to show you how it open and close the slot. And later on we will add seeds and try different speeds. Uh, once we've done that in this uh, grassland, we will be able to, to go to the other fields and, uh, and demonstrate there as well. Uh, Wim, would you like to, to start the demonstration? Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. Yep. Mm. Yep. So you see, the idea of the drill is that you can uh, plant with a zipper effect. Between the, the grassland and the seed slot, you barely see the difference. It's very... it's like a zipper. You also see that it's, it's wet today. It's very, it's very wet. But anyway, in a, in a soil like this, grassland, and you will have this also in uh, conservation agriculture, if you manage it well with, uh, with cover crops and so on, you will see the soil is able to drink quite quickly the water, and you will be able to plant more earlier, because the ma water management is better. Uh, you want to speed up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah go. if you want to speed up, go for it. Yeah. So, now Wim is uh, speeding up. Ah, he's changing gear. Yeah. yeah. So this is about the speed you will... Uh, uh, this is about five kilometers an hour, I think, six maybe. Oh, a number of farmers here plan for this speed, and uh, I will ask Wim uh, to, to go faster later again. Yeah. If you want, you can, uh, you can open the seed slot for those who dare to, to open it. It's, uh, ah, I've got to see some guys opening it over here. But you can just reopen it, because it's like a zipper, you can just reopen. So now at the moment there's no seed in it. But it will be here when later, later when we place the seed. Uh, you, you can really see, by the way, you can reopen it, how the machine went and dropped the soil behind. And this is what we are doing. It's a, it's a zipper effect. Um, yeah. You have a hair from here, yeah? Uh, Wim is coming back. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. I think uh, Wim will speed up just to show uh, it at high speed. I think he's still uh, driving five or six an hour. Oh. How many planters can you attach to? Uh, yeah. yeah. Broad cedar, yeah. how many? Uh, I've, got, I've got a question uh, here uh, from Jauke, who is asking me how many row units you can attach to a frame. Uh, I think there's no limit. You can make, make it as wide as you want. Uh, because a row unit um, is an element on its own, and you just 
can uh, copy paste it as much as you want. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. What, what is your name? What is your name? Martijn. Martijn. Okay. I have a good question here from Martijn, which is asking me uh, between a uh, a uh, standard double disc planter like John, John Deere will have the standard John Deere or the standard Kuhn or so on. What, uh, what is the difference? The difference is that when you use a double disc, you create a seed slot by applying a pressure and around the seed and under the seed, the soil is compacted and uh, you, uh, this will give you rooting problems in some stage. Uh, the main root will, uh, will have some issue to penetrate. Also, in the seed slot with John Deere or, uh, or Kuhn or any double disc, you cannot apply uh, as well and as much fertilizer as I do. I can, because I've got so much space in the bottom of the seed slot, I can really pop up, uh, increase the quantity of fertilizer. And, uh, and also, in heavy soils, this is using gravity to close itself the seed slot and you will always close the seed slot. And heavy salts with uh, a double disc, because you have applied so many pressure to open it, you need to apply even more pressure to close it, and some, sometimes you don't even close the seed slot, it just stay open. Yeah. And price? I will tell you later. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I, I think I will ask Wim to do uh, to drive a 10 km hour or 15. I will, uh, I will ask him. Yeah. Yeah. Wim, zullen we binnenkort een keer flink gas geven? 10, 15 km per uur? Ik heb net een stukje gedaan. Ah, ik heb het er mis, sorry. Oké. Okay. Nou, ik, ik vraag het dan uh, aan Tim of hij heeft het op de video. Tim, Wim heeft net uh, flink gas heeft. Heb je op de video kunnen gaan zetten? Mm, dit gedeelte denk ik wel, maar geen lang stuk in ieder geval. Oké, okay, ik zou hem gewoon een keer opnieuw te doen, zodat ze een beetje indrukwekkend. Wat, wat zou leuk zijn, Wim, is. Uh, we zijn niet zeker of we het hebben op de camera. Als je doet het nog een keer op, ja, op een langer stuk, dan is het. Uh, dan mensen kunnen het goed zien. Ja, 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 ja. Nee. Goed, prima. Ja. Ik heb morgen die machine hier ook nog. Ik heb morgen die machine hier ook nog. Oké, okay. ik ga wel een keer gaan onderzoeken. Die zit hier al lang met de stoei. Om in zoiets door te zijn en in begroeien. Ja, ja, goed. Dat is wat je moet hebben. Ja, dan gaan we met mijn morgen toe voor de Oké, okay, goed. Ja, ja. ja. Leuk. Ja. Die, die zit zeg maar, met groene mensen en dan willen dan direct in saai. Ja. Dan, uh, Top idee, ja, dat kan, dat kan echt het helpen. Ja. Dat kan echt de oplossing zijn. Ja, ja. nou, dit ja. zie je niet van je loopt nu al een paar uur met de top om, om dat te krijgen. Ja, neem ik een en doen we. Ja, doen we. Ben jij maar toevallig Ik weet het niet, ik ben net pas vader geworden en uh, de drie laatste dagen ben ik alleen maar aan te werken. Ik wil ook uh, de ja. baby's verboren op zondag, dus ik ben nog niet echt thuis geweest. Bedankt. <laughs> ja. Uh, Wim will do a fast run, so he will go uh, 10 or 15 k's an hour, I don't know. So, uh, Have you ervaring op the client? Sorry? Have you ervaring op the client? I've got a question here, what's your name? Sorry. Hi, John. John, I've got a question uh, here from John, who is asking me if I've got experience on clay. Uh, yes, I do have experience on clay in France, so heavy clay you will find in France. Mostly and corn, I think. Uh, corn, but also uh, to plant cover crops and other things. So, yeah. Which crop were you thinking about planting? Potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> okay. Uh, John no, wants no, no, to plant no, no. potatoes. I'm not sure if I can today offer a solution for potatoes. Yeah. We grow uh, sugar beets and onions. Yeah. Uh, I, I will. In the, uh, I want to walk to go towards uh, those crops. Yeah. And. Uh, oh. And. Uh, I hope that in the close future I've got something to offer for sugar beets and onions. Okay. I, I could this one on the monosem, I believe I can do already sugar beets today. Onions, it's a bit different because of the row spacing, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the row spacing of 45 or 50 for sugar beets I can offer. 
Yeah, sure. But do you, um, uh, for, for clay for example, do you not think the, the soil is too compacted for the plant to grow? So, what is your name? Kasper. Okay, I've got the question here from Kasper who is asking me, don't you fear that think that on clay ground the soil is too compacted to plant it this way? And uh, the answer is, the, uh, when you do conservation agriculture, uh, you have to understand that a farmer who is doing conservation agriculture is not a lazy farmer, he's clever. What he does, he has stopped doing mechanical tillage, but he uses cover crops and plants and soil life to do the tillage for him. And when you uh, use the cover crops in the right way, and you plant, for, for example, if you plant uh, cover crops the day of the harvest, and you let it grow as much as it wants, as much as it can, until the day you will plant your next crop, this cover crop will have done a lot of uh, soil preparation for you. It is bio bio biological soil preparation. And, uh, and then your soil will be nice and smooth, and you can really plant with this in uh, clay ground. Yeah. Okay, what about but you have to keep in mind, uh, you do not stop uh, preparing your soil, you prepare it with roots and soil life. That's the main thing, keep it in mind. So you, uh, it would be preferable to use um, a faster rijpaden? Rijpaden? Um, 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 yeah, CTF, Controlled Traffic Farming. Uh, so Casper is asking, if I do this, should I use uh, Controlled Traffic Farming? Yes, you can. It's, uh, you can, it's, it will be positive on your system. However, there are a number of farmers who doesn't. Okay. So you can do without it. I will now go back to the machine and maybe we'll try to put the, the seeds in the soil and uh, show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Shall I begin to say? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, now we have seen... Uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now we have uh, seen how the seed slots open and close. Now it's time to put some seeds on the soil. So uh, we have here, it is not the time of the year to plant it, but, uh, but we have some, we have some, uh, some corn seeds. So it's, uh, it's not treated, it's yellow, so you will be able to find it easy in the, in the seed slot. Uh, And because on this John Deere, there's also a, uh, a second product, uh, hopper. We, uh, we looked at what can we put in the seed hopper at this time of the year, which will not be a problem. So we went and bought some uh, food items. And uh, normally a farmer will use some chemicals or some fertilizer, but today we just use a nice coral. It is white, it's easy to find in the seed slot, and, uh, and so you will enjoy it. Oh. I'll open just this one and I will see if we need more later. <laughs> so I've got a joke here, I don't know if you hear it on the live stream. But uh, they asked me, why didn't you, did you make it uh, pink or blue? Indeed, in the Netherlands, when you have a child, you, uh, you serve people what they call mouches, and it is either blue or, or, uh, or pink, depending on, on the sex, the gender of the kid. Put this one here. So, to, uh, to do this part, as it is just a row unit, we do not have a, uh, a wheel to drive on the system. And, uh, but we have a crank, so I will use the crank and turn it around for you, so you can observe the seed uh, coming down, the seed trench, the product coming in, and you will see how it goes. Yep, I'm ready? Yep. Yeah, 10 miles? Yeah. <laughs>
Stop maar. <laughs> it went well. We, we just planted a few meters of, uh, of corn. Uh, and now I will uh, invite anybody who is interested to open the seed slot and, uh, and check out the seed. Um, I'm looking at it. Oh, yeah. In, I'm just checking the depth. It might be a bit, uh, a bit deep. It might be a good six centimeter, I think. But you should be able to find the, the seeds. <laughs> so we are here. We are on one of the seed slots. Uh, uh, so uh, you can see the the white uh, anise corals, the white product. That's also well in the seed slot. And if we look, so we see the anise, and at the bottom of the seed slot, I should find some corn seeds, and we have them here. So I did crank it a bit fast because I've got five in one spot. So I did put quite some corn seeds. We have a high de density of corn seeds. <laughs> but anyway, you can see the principle yeah. and you see where the, the corn is uh, going. So we are, we are a bit deep here. We could uh, decrease the uh, deep. And, uh, but so I think you, you see the principle. Yeah. And you, you see also the white corals, which uh, if it was an agrochemical, it will protect the seeds from slugs, for example, or so on. So. Uh, I've got... Where is the battery then? Yeah, die gaat zo. Die is zo okay. away. Okay, zal ik dan afsluiten voor de livestream? Okay. I've got uh, a heads up from Tim, which is saying that the battery the, yeah, the battery of the live stream is going uh, low and I think the live stream will end soon so maybe better we close it off uh, now and uh, for the other for the last to fill unfortunately we will do without live stream but anyway we will make pictures and we will show uh, later on thanks for watching the live stream and uh, thanks for watching and see you soon bye <laughs>